What is going on guys? Welcome back to Forno Gaming and today we are taking a look at the brand new dawning fusion rifle they added to the game, the Glacioclasm. Okay, this thing is a beast off the rip. I've only been able to actually play a couple games with it and we have to do a private match and test it out and just off the rip I could tell it's an absolute beast. Aaron Till 2.0, 100% and in our testing, I actually think it might be better than Aaron Till, uh, post Aaron Till patch. So this thing is nuts and it couldn't have come at a better time for Fusion Rifle players. Trials is coming up this Friday, just a couple days away. So make sure you guys start doing your dawning stuff, knock out a bunch of those packages and get a good roll. I'm gonna tell you guys all about the best rolls, uh, the gun testing, things like that. So I hope you guys enjoy. Drop that like button if this helps you out and you guys are excited to use the Fusion Rifle. Let me know the best rolls you guys think down in the comments and let's get right into this. Alright guys, so here's the Glacioplasm. It's a brand new high impact fusion rifle. Uh, it rolls with void in the energy slot. And like I said, it's an absolute beast so far. I just wanted to go ahead and show you the one that I did all of this testing on before we actually get into looking at the specific god rolls that you're going to want to be going for. Just so you guys know what all my testing was done on. Uh, mine has unrelenting and under pressure. And then it has Fu uh, projection fuse and corkscrew rifling so these two obviously great perks for range and then i only had a handling masterwork so not much help there either and then i kind of swapped around this mod depending on what we're testing which you'll see later so just want to show this and now let's dive into the god rolls so diving right in as you can see i'm going to be comparing the glacioclasm to the exile's curse which in my opinion is the other prior to the glacioclasm the best fusion rifle that is out for pvp so just wanted to kind of compare them side by side and give you guys a good inside look it's okay so right off the bat we have the exiles curse already showing lower stats across the board compared to the glacioclasm you see the glacioclasm has just base stat wise 14 more range than the exiles curse that is going to be a big difference maker for you uh, the stability as well increased, the handling increased. The only thing that's a little bit lower is the reload speed. Um, the impact being the same on both, so they're going to have the same damage numbers, but the different range, the increased stability, handling, all those things are going to make a huge difference in the gameplay for these weapons. Uh, on the hidden stats, we actually are a little bit lower here on the Glacioclasm, but only ever so slightly. You can see it's five here in the aim assist, and then everything else is very similar or just one point in favor of the Exile's Curse or the Glacioclasm. So pretty much the same across the board on the hidden stats. They're both 860 charge times, five in the magazine. So pretty standard, except the Glacioclasm just has a big advantage on the wet base weapon stats, particularly on the with the 14 extra range. So coming down to the random rolls, you can see they have very, very different perk combinations. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show these off just to show you that if you are looking for a specific, a specific perk or you kind of have a different play style or have something else in mind, maybe it might be worth going with the Exile's Curse over the Glacioclasm because of the different perks that they roll with. I think a lot of the perks on the Glacioclasm are better suited for Crucible than Exile's Curse, but there are things like Firmly Planted here on Exile's Curse and different things like that that will definitely be good if that fits your play style. So keep that in mind. But with that said, let's just dive straight into the Glacioclasm and go through what I think are the best perks. Now, if you guys have watched any of my other Fusion Rifle videos, you guys know that I always want to... <clears throat> now, if you guys have watched any of my other Fusion Rifle videos, you'll know that I always am going to favor stability over range in the current sandbox. Um, although the range is helpful in some situations, the stability and the accuracy that comes out of the stability and being able to land all your shots, in my opinion, is much more important than the extra meter or so that you're going to get with the increased range. So starting out with that, we have a couple options here for the barrel. We have arrowhead break, which is really great. It gives you that plus 30 recoil. This is really going to help just keep all your shots in a nice tight cluster. Um, the handling is kind of eh, but that re plus 30 recoil is huge and definitely always a good option there. We have the chambered compensator, um, stability plus 10, handling minus 5, which we don't care about again, and then the recoil plus 10. This is also a great option, plus 10 stability, plus 10 recoil. You can't go wrong with this. It's going to help tighten up your shots. Uh, corkscrew rifling this gives you a little bit of stability a little bit of range so it's not a terrible roll if everything else kind of falls out but i would definitely stick with one of these two if possible um coming down range and recoil 
this is a much better option than the one above corkscrew rifling in my opinion i'd much rather have the increase and then just lose the handling once again the handling isn't doing a ton for you here uh and not helping you secure kills like stability range and recoil will uh coming down again stability plus five handling plus 15 don't care about handling uh range plus 15 stability minus 10 i would definitely stay away from full board that extra 15 is only going to gain you about one meter of range uh kill ability and the stability is going to get crushed and you're not even going to be able to land all of the shots at that distance because the kick is going to be too much so don't do that and if you have any questions or want to see like the further testing be sure to check out our other fusion rifle videos that really dive into some of these numbers that i'm talking about um, down here, plus 10 range, hammer forge rifling. It's fine and certainly an option if you wanted to go there. But like I said, the plus one meter or so that you're going to get from that, not a big deal. Polygonal, plus 10 if you can get it. But, you know, there's better options up here, plus 10 and plus 10 recoil. So definitely probably going to stick with these two. And just for, you know, good measure, the last two small bore, once again, not bad, plus seven, plus seven. It's doable. So there's a bunch of doable options, I'd say, in here. Uh, only a couple that you really need to stay away from, like full bore. Uh, but, you know, the go-to is obviously going to be Arrowhead Brake and Chambered Capacitor. Next, we have the different battery mods. And here, there's really only two options, uh, Projection Fuse or Particle Repeater. Particle Repeater, without a doubt, is my go-to. Once again, that stability, I always believe, is going to help tighten up that spread and make sure that you land shots more consistently uh, compared to the plus 10 that's just going to get you the range. All the other ones have pretty big downsides. So, charge time, we don't want minus 10 on that. Uh, magazine, don't really care in PvP. Uh, magazine, again, don't really care. Accelerated coils, great for the charge time, but the reduction of 10 impact is going to decrease your range. So, And the charge time difference is really ever so slight. So, yeah, definitely go with projection fuse if possible and as your backup, particle repeater. Now let's get into the fun stuff. The last two perk options where the god rules are made. There's a lot of great options in this first column, um, mostly dependent on your play style though. Ambitious Assassin, definitely a throw out. Um, moving on, Slide Shot. I think this one can be great if you play a lot of ground game. Um, this will be great for Titans, you know, sliding around with the new stasis ability. Um, it's obviously going to reload your weapon and increase your range and stability temporarily after sliding. So this could be huge for you Titan sliders out there. Um, personally, for me, it's not on my top list as a Warlock. I always run transversive steps. So the reload's pretty much irrelevant, and I find myself flying more than sliding. But for Titans, this is definitely a good go-to. Uh, under Pressure, I think this is a great one. Um, I find that it's kind of half and half for me because I find that if you are good with fusion rifles and you're not dying, you're constantly going to have a full magazine. So you're not really going to have that lower end, in which case Under Pressure is being wasted. But especially if you're starting out with fusion rifles or if you know, you're not really running a bunch of scavs. I always run two scavs, but if you're not running scavenger, then this could be a good option for you. And it's definitely not going to hurt you when it comes time to clutch time and you need to hit a shot and you only have a couple bullets left. Now, surplus is one of the new ones that's kind of controversial um, because a lot of people love it. But in my opinion, you really shouldn't have your abilities fully charged in the crucible. Like if you're not using your abilities, you're playing at a disadvantage. So I don't really like to use this perk with the thought that I'm not going to be using my abilities. I try to use my melees. I try to use my grenades. I try and use my rifts as much as possible to give my team and myself the advantage. So that's why I personally would stay away from this perk. Field prep, I personally am not crouching and the weapon stow reload and ready is just not really a good one for crucible in my opinion so stay away from that and killing wind also a beast perk this is probably the one that i'm going to be going for um increased mobility weapon range specifically and handling for a short duration uh personally for me i'm trying to run around i'm trying to chain kills and just have great movement on the map so killing wind is a perk that i personally really like um, if you're more of a neutral ground player and you're not running around the map like a crazy man, this might be one to stay away from. You know, maybe then you go to the under pressure. But personally, I think Killing Wind, Under Pressure, and Slide Shot are going to be the three that you kind of want based off of play style. Uh, for me, that's going to be Killing Wind. Moving on to the final category, we have a couple options again. Demolitionist. Uh, I think with the addition of Stasis, Demolitionist definitely has a place more so this season in the crucible than it has in the past getting back those freeze grenades and those walls and all of that stuff is only going to help your team more and more so 
definitely recommend this. It's not a terrible perk. It may not be the best one depending on play style, but it's definitely going to help you out. Surrounded, you're not really surrounded by more than three enemies, and if you are, you're probably going to die. So definitely stay away from that. Unrelenting, also stay away from this. Once again, you have to kill multiple enemies, and even though it says guardians count as more than one kill, uh, I don't ever really seem to see it proc. Um, I've killed two, three people rapidly, um, and I don't think I've seen it maybe once or twice. So this is kind of one that's kind of obsolete uh, as far as that goes in PvP, even though it sounds really good uh, via the description. So don't get fooled. Stay away from this one as well. Swashbuckler. Um, this is another gun that could be good on other weapons, and people always think, oh, more damage, more damage. But if you're within, the, it's only going to really help you within that extra meter or two where you need the extra damage. But since this is a one shot, one kill weapon at 20 meters and below, anything within that range, it doesn't matter if you have increased damage or not because it's going to kill the target anyway. So Swashbuckler is one where you really think like, oh yeah, more damage is great. But really, it's just overkill damage that's not being used in any efficient way. So... It's an okay perk, I guess. It might help you in a very specific situation where you're just outside of range and you just killed two people. But in most cases, I'm going to say this is going to be obsolete because it's one killing anyway. Auto loading holster, not really my go-to um, because I don't really mind reloading. Like I said, I run transversive steps. If you're running slide shot, things like that, you normally have time to reload your weapon with five bullets in the mag if you even have ammo to reload with. So not really what I'm going for. High impact reserves, same thing, more damage at the end of the magazine, but do you really need the damage? So... With all this in mind, there's not as much useful stuff in this column as there is in this one for me. Uh, like I said, Demolitionist is looking prettier and prettier, specifically since we don't have a moving target, a tap the trigger, something like that that's going to be very, very useful uh, at all times. A lot of this is situational, and I think your best bet might be Demolitionist if you're somebody who really uses their grenades and is trying to capitalize with as many freezes with the stasis builds. Also, if you are someone who thinks that surplus could be useful, Demolitionist is a great perk to combine with that. This creates great synergy because Demolitionist is constantly getting you back your grenade if you don't have it, which ultimately will help you keep that ability charged more often, giving you this increased handling, reload speed, and stability. So yeah, final thoughts, I would say my god roll is either a chamber capacitor or arrowhead break. I would probably take the arrowhead break, and then I'd come down here, I'd take the particle repeater for the plus 10 stability, Come over here, take the Killing Wind along with Demolitionist, and I think that is going to be your go-to and what I would say is your god roll for this current sandbox meta. And of course, if you can throw on a stability or ranged masterwork with this, it's going to be an absolute beast. Now let's dive in and take a look at some of the testing so I can really show you how much of a beast this gun is, even with my subpar roll. All right, so first things first, big shout out to Mattbot, my buddy, who helped me do all of this testing. He's in my clan. He's an absolute beast, and I would not have been able to do this without him. So thank you so much, Mattbot. Uh, first thing we tested was the range, which you're seeing right now. We started off at the 19-meter mark, which was where Arantil kind of hit successfully uh, consistently at that range was around the 18, 19 meter mark. And as you can see, this gun is hitting consistently at the 19 meter mark, the 20 meter mark. We try the 21 meter mark. It hits there as well. Uh, almost kills on this first one, which you just saw. And eventually does get the kill here at the 21 meter mark. And we even backed up even further to the 22 meter mark and we're able to get a kill there. Now the 21 and 22 meter range were definitely not consistent. They're definitely gonna be RNG based um, and they're gonna be on, I would say less than 50% shots uh, at those ranges. But this is, like I said, on the roll at the beginning, this one has 80 range and you could get, that's without the masterwork and I don't even think it has the most optimal mods either. So you could push it to 90, 95 range I think and definitely have consistent shots at the 21 meter mark and maybe even push to a RNG 23 meter mark. This is way above anything I've ever tested for uh, since I started testing at the beginning of Shadow Keep. So definitely the longest range I've seen without using special perks like Firmly Planted and things like that. And finally, of course, the other test we always do is we just like to check out the recoil from this exact spot on the map. All of our other videos and guides have kind of done this. And the recoil looked pretty similar to Aaron Till and all the other ones. This test isn't scientific, obviously, in any means, and it's not enough 
bulk of data to really kind of give you anything. It is a lot of RNG, but for the most part, it did kick a little bit right with, uh, I think we just had all stock mods. We didn't have anything on there. At one point I put on uh, targeting assist to see if that would tighten it up a little bit, but we didn't do anything with counterbalance and we didn't have any recoil mods. So this is at the base, uh, I believe it's 78 recoil. And you can kind of see the spread here. So it does kick a little bit to the right. Um, and then for some reason that one went left. I'm not really sure, you know, once again, it is a lot of RNG. So just wanted to sh put these up here as well so you could check them out. But overall, it seems like the recoil kick is kind of the same. And this is not a high stability roll at all. So once you kind of get a lot of those stability mods on and things like that, it's going to kill it. So that's pretty much it, guys. As you can see, the Glacioclasm is an absolute beast. I will definitely be using it in trials this weekend. I hope to get a little better with the uh, recoil adjustment and things like that. But you should definitely be slaying people if you guys like using fusion rifles. Good luck getting the best rolls. And until next time, hope to see you guys around. Peace.